much I can almost never <laughs> grab him for very long because off he's gone. He's got the MBT feet. Yeah, well, you know, you got me this time. Uh, I got him this time, so I'm really going to, I'm taking advantage of him while I've got him. Uh, and today we're going to talk to you about how to get internet out on the road. I've gotten a lot of questions about that. How do I get internet out on the road? I have it at home. I have unlimited internet. What am I going to do out there? Uh, and Al, that must have been a question that you had for yourself three years ago. Yeah, you know, because when I was, was living in my house, I had unlimited internet, uh, you know, like most people do. And I got used to having a lot of data and a lot of uh, easily, easy access to the data. But I knew that would be different on the road. And so I did a little research and I got a, uh, a Wi-Fi booster or rather, excuse me, a cellular booster, um, a Wilson model, but it turned out to be the wrong one. It was only good for 3G, because you know, you gotta read the fine print when you order these things. Um, but I also had a cellular booster. The Wi-Fi booster boosts the, you know, the big internet signal coming, the cellular signal. And the Wi-Fi booster takes somebody else's Wi-Fi and you can access it from a farther distance. Like instead of being in McDonald's and using their Wi-Fi, you can be out in the parking lot and using their Wi-Fi. So you um, started with both? I started with both. Um, and after a while, it's, I was really frustrated because my phone that I was using was AT&T, which didn't cover a lot of the area out here in the West that I wanted to, to be. It's fine in the cities, but you get outside the cities and you lose coverage rather quickly. Um, and the cellular booster wasn't working for me. You may remember the first time I camped with you in Flagstaff, I would disappear every day to go down the road to McDonald's to use their Wi-Fi because I wasn't getting a cellular signal that I could use for data. And although I had good cell signal in that camp yes. with my Verizon. Right. And that gets old really fast. That gets really going into town every day. Going into town or getting some place where you can find signal is, you know, yeah, it's no fun. So I thought, okay, I'm going to get um, a jetpack. So even though I had an AT&T cell phone, I got a Verizon jetpack. And tell us what a jetpack is. A jetpack is a little standalone device. Hold on. <laughs> like that. Hold it, hold it up and still. This is one of the new models. This is, I started out with a different model than this. And, uh, you know, it can take the, uh, the Wi-Fi signal that's in the air. I mean, the, the cellular signal that's in the air and grab it and becomes your source of data. So it's a, it becomes a Wi-Fi hotspot on its own. Right, and th you can c connect up to four devices with this. So your computer, three other people's computers, or your computer and your phone, your computer and something else or whatever. And that connects wirelessly to those things. Right, just like this becomes McDonald's. Yeah, this is or like- Or Starbucks. Right, in, in your pocket. In your pocket. And so I got one of those and it was great. It was working for me fine. So at the time, you had both AT&T and Verizon. An AT&T phone and a Verizon jetpack. And the AT&T was much better. No, the jet, the Verizon was better. I'm teasing. I'm yeah. being a smart ass, folks. <laughs> AT&T sucks out here. <laughs> That's my point. <laughs> and then I got the correct um, cellular booster to work with 4G. And that was the Wilson Sleek at the time. The Wilson Sleek, right. And... I was living happily, and then... Um, uh, let's back up a little bit. You had unlimited data at home. How much data did you have then? The first Verizon Jetpack I got, the most they would offer is 10 gigabytes. Right. And that might seem a lot for some people. I know some people have plans where they're happy with two to five gigabytes, but 10 right. to me was just like, <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, and so you know, I was going happily along. Do you mind if I ask you now? This was 
three years ago, so that's a long time ago, in, di in the digital world. How much were you paying for those 10 gigs? Do you remember? I, I think it's like 60 bucks. It was, it was, yeah, more than that. More than that? But, uh... No, it was, it was 50 bucks for five. I think it was close to 100 for 10. Yeah, it was, it was in that 100 range. Right. Yeah. Um, and so I was happy. But I wasn't really happy with the, the 10 gigabytes. I wish I had more. I had to be very careful. I had to watch it a lot. Now, 10 gigs is a lot. Were you downloading? Were you streaming mu uh, mu movies or music? I wasn't stream uh, downloading a lot, but I spent you know, several hours a day online. Right. You know, it was your hobby. Online and nap, and online and nap. You right. know? <laughs> and drive with and you. Drive, and drive, yes, and drive. <laughs> so the 10 gig gigabytes was getting kind of restrictive for me. And I heard about Melanicom, which is another carrier. It was carrying Verizon, and you can get up to 20 gigabytes. And now, when you say they were carrying Verizon, they use Verizon towers. Right. They bought the huge bulk amount of time from Verizon and resold it. Right. And so I thought, you know, the deal is good enough and I can afford to have the Melanicom as well as my Verizon jetpack. So I had two jetpacks for a while. 20 gigs and 10. 10, so I had 30 altogether and that, that made me happy. You were happy then? <laughs> <laughs> I could use a gig a day, you know. You know. <laughs> well, then Verizon shut down Millennicom. Mm -hmm. And so that went away. Right. But to sort of make peace with the former Millennicom users, they offered a 30 gigabyte plan. So I got the 30 gigabyte plan from Verizon. And it cost me more than it did before, but I really needed the data, <laughs> you know. You're a junkie. I was a junkie, yes. I still am. <laughs> and so then my phone contract on the AT&T phone ended. And I got a Verizon phone with tethering so it could be used as a hotspot. Right. So I could use either the phone. Same thing. You It, it received the signal and rebroadcast it. It became your Starbucks or, or McDonald's. Right. The phone did. So I had the phone, which could give me my data, or I had the jetpack, which could give me my data. And well, the, for a while there, you had three. No, because the Millennicom went away. Oh, right. That, by then, the Millennicom had gone away. By then, the Millennicom went away. Um, so I have the two. Right. Whichever is more convenient. There's advantages and disadvantages. On the phone, it uses up the battery faster. Right. But the phone can pick up a signal easier than the jetpack can. Jetpack battery lasts longer, but sometimes it doesn't pick up the signal as well as the phone does. I don't know why. Then my Wilson Sleek booster started going bad. And I think it was because the connector to the power cord loosened up off of the circuit board. I've I've had that happen to me twice as well. The, yeah. the, the, it still worked fine, but I couldn't charge it. Yeah. And so that wasn't working for me. And I got the new version. Since then, Wilson took all this cellular products and, and named it WeBoost. And so now it's the WeBoost something or other. It's pretty much the same thing, looks a little bit different. I actually, uh, I actually called them uh, when the we when the will. I'm a big fan of Wilson Sleek. I've owned numerous ones, and they break, and I buy new ones. They're that good. <laughs> um, and I called Wilson. We were switching over to they. They changed their names. I don't know why. It's a terrible name. We Boost. Uh, and I called them and asked the clerk. And I I finally nailed her down. Is there any difference other than cosmetics and looks between these two units? And she said no. They are 100% identical. They just changed some cosmetic things. Yeah, a little bit different shape on the case. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, they, Wilson kept all their, like, their trucker things are yes. still Wilson. And right. that, and that are bigger, higher-end radio stuff. But the cellular phone stuff is all WeBoost now. Because right. they boost your signal. Right. We boost. We do. <laughs> Clever. 
Anyway, okay, so the new booster. And that was fine, that was working good. But I spent a lot of time this summer away from anybody's cell signal or on the fringes of cell signals. And I'd, I'd have days when I couldn't get anything. I thought, well, I've seen people like Bob and RV Sue have a directional cellular antenna. Well, let's go back to when we were camping together in Prescott. Yeah. Uh, you're, even with your uh, Sleek, Wilson Sleek, uh, you didn't get a signal, and I was with yeah, we, my Wilson Sleek. We were 20 yards apart. 20 yards apart. And uh, I couldn't get crap, and he, he got a good signal. And because? He had the directional antenna. The directional antenna. And so I got one, too. <laughs> a new better toy. <laughs> new toy. <laughs> Christmas in uh, July or whenever. Yeah. And that has made a difference in a lot of spots. Yeah. There'd be times when I'd, I'd check the signal and say I'd have three bars of 3G. And I'd hook up the antenna and I'd have three bars of, of 4G. Right. That's been my experience as well. However, there are still some places where it would... The signal would keep getting strong, weak, strong, okay. weak throughout the day from 1X to 4G to back and forth. Sure. And, you know. There's sometimes you're just too far away, you're not going to get a signal. Yeah. Or there are things in the way. Right. That's In the mountains, that's usually the problem. Yeah. So let's look at the antenna. Sure. So so we've hopefully we've sold you on the idea that once you leave your house, you are going to have to give up a lot of your data. I know most of you are getting it from your cable company or wherever it's coming from, and you get an unlimited amount or just a huge amount. You are going to have to ration. Uh, you may have 30. I have 30 gigs. I have a 30 gig Verizon plan. So, oh, did you... You said Millennicom was coming back. Millennicom has come back, only they're now dealing with Sprint instead. Oh, well. well and Sprint is like, well, I'd rather have AT&T than Sprint. Yeah, they're <laughs> even worse than AT&T. Yeah. So, but they've got some really good prices. If you're going to be living mostly around cities and things like that, then that would be a good thing to check out. Right. If you're going to be mainly in cities or towns, and even some towns, you can't get AT&T or Sprint, uh, then... If you're in a city, buy on price. Whoever's cheapest yeah. gives you the most data for the best deal. But once you leave the cities, you want to give Verizon and get the best deal you can, which because Verizon is better, they can charge more. What can you say? They offer a better service. And people get mad. I've had people yeah. angry at me because I promote Verizon. They just overcharge. Building all those towers is expensive, and they build a lot of towers, and they have to charge more for all those towers. I love the towers. I'm willing to pay more for the towers. They give terrible customer service. That has not been my experience. They're all just average. Uh, they're no better or worse than anyone else, I, I don't think. Um, and you, now you can get a 40 gig plan and they have the share everything where you can get a phone and a jet, I have a phone and a jet pack and 30 gigs of data uh, and it's costing me about 175 a month. A lot of money, but I gotta do it. I gotta have that much data. Um, do you mind if I ask you what you're paying? More than that, because mine is an older plan, oh. <laughs> probably. Oh. Yeah, so mine's like 215 right. a month. Right, the, uh, yeah. So, um, and I got a deal where they, for a while there, they were, I had, was going to go buy a 15 gig plan and they gave you 15 gigs free. Yeah. So I got that. They're always changing plans. So always you got to kind of keep checking and seeing you what do. the latest thing is. Yeah. It's always. So the bottom line is uh, you're going to have to go down a, a much smaller amount. You'll just use your, uh, your smartphone or a jet pack, whichever one is most convenient for you. You can use one, the other, or both. Adding on, if you have a smartphone, adding a second line as a jet pack, I think it's 10 or $20. It was worth it to me. Plus the cost of the device. And the cost of the device, which sometimes is not much. or they, That's all changed now, too. They don't give free devices with new plans. It's no. paying the monthly fees. It's all really changing. When you, By the time you're watching this, it all could have changed dramatic, drastically <laughs> again. So, Verizon could have got out of business. Who knows? Who knows? Oh, oh, I hope not. Don't ever say. Don't even say that. I'd, I, it'll break my. I'd, I'll have to close up shop if Verizon goes out of business, or I'd have to move into the city, and I'd have to close up shop because I can't do that. Yeah. Um, so, 
you can do it. Now, you can do it with a jetpack or with your smartphone, and, and we highly, both highly recommend the new WeBoost, and we don't even know the name of the new WeBoost. It's yeah. it's the low price one. It's the low price one. It's on Amazon, and I'll get there'll be a, we'll we'll put this up on the screen. You'll know the name there. I'll put a link to it in the description. Uh, so it's it's there. I just don't remember what it is off the top of my head. The new name. I know what the Wilson Sleek is. I've owned one for three or four years, five years. Uh, and so if you really want the very best, you add the directional antenna to it. And so you're going to show us now the directional antenna. Directional antenna. Oh, so here is your directional antenna. Yours says WeBoost, mine says Wilson, but otherwise it's identical. So tell us how it works. Okay, well, inside this uh, little box, there's some wiry thingies that are magic and it's just magic. Pull, pull signals from the air. Right. And uh, cable comes out, attaches to another cable, which attaches to the booster. Right. I can show you how to do that. Um, this little section here is usually about that long. I cut it off. Don't know why it was there. I got some uh, electrical conduit, flattened one end, bolted that to there. I assume you just beat it with a hammer until it was flat? Yep. Yep. Had a good day that day. Pardon? You had a good day that day. Oh yeah, I think I can <laughs> smash things, you know. That's good. Okay, so after I got this all dismounted on the, the electrical conduit, I put some uh, some U-bolts up on my on my ladder rack. Oh yeah, you see them. And so then I can climb up here on... You just step on your back bumper. Step on the back bumper. Well, first I connect the cable. Right, because it's not going to do any good without That's it. That's cable. Screw, 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 screw. Put the cable up there. And then that slips in there and I tighten it with some wing nuts. Just, wing, just plain old wing nuts. And so, then, once I get this connected to the booster and the jetpack in the booster, I can turn this until I get the strongest signal I can. Because it's directional, you ha it has to be aimed at the tower. Right, you aim it at the tower. If you don't know where the tower is, you gotta kinda do this. Or there are apps that you can get that will find the closest tower for you. The, uh, the strongest tower. So you just have the, uh, you're, you're standing there, you've got the jet pack or your phone in your hand, and you turn it, and as the, if the uh, bars go up, you're going the right direction. Yep. And if the bar is going down, you're going the wrong direction. Yeah, you gotta turn it, wait a couple of seconds, turn it, wait a couple of seconds, see what it, happens. There's a lag there. Yeah. And so, once you find it, you tighten it up. Yep. Now, you, I, I remember uh, when I did this, you have to have an adapter uh, going into something, out of something into something. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk about that. Okay. So this is, 10 feet was enough for me. You can get like 10, 15, 20 feet. You bought this? Uh, oh, so I've got this on Amazon. All of it came from Amazon. Yeah. Screw that there. We go back up. Now, one of the things we run into fairly often out here is wind, so you must have to do the wing nuts fairly tight, or you just let it turn in the wind. Um, this happens to bind down here, so I it doesn't see. want to turn unless I turn it. So. Okay, so you're not having problems with it turning in the wind? No. Okay, so this is, this is my booster. Usually they're like that for telephones. And this is a power cord that's running to a 12 volt outlet I have down here. It just uses a cigarette lighter plug. Right. Because the original intent for these was you'd stick them on the dash of your vehicle, plug it into your cigarette lighter, put your phone in it. Right. But we know it can do so much more. Right. <laughs> and ordinarily, um, they come with a, a small antenna like that. It's just magnetic. A magnetic You'd put that on the roof of your vehicle, and the other end would connect 
the thing, which is which is fine, you know. Does an amazingly good job. In places where we are right now, near we're near a town, it's no problem. But to connect that into a thing that's meant for that, you need an adapter or two. So I started off with with these two adapters. This one goes into there. This one goes into there. And that goes into the booster. Then someone who's had experience with this said there's a problem with doing it this way. And that is the weight of the cable and screwing it in and out of the, the booster can cause the connector here to fail. And we know with the electro, electrical connection, it happens a lot. Right, it happens with this. And so it can happen with this one where it's soldered onto the circuit board inside. So I did that for a while and I thought, okay, is there another way to do this? And I got poking around on Amazon Looking for, well, come on. I can't remember the names of these connectors, but that connector has a name and that connector has a name. Is there something that goes straight from there to there with some wire in between? And I found it. And that's this. This wire comes around and goes to there, which I have mounted here, which means I can connect the cable to there and wiggle this all I want, and it's not going to wiggle the connector on right. the booster. Very good. So I can connect that and then bring this in, connect that there, and with that there, I'm in business. Now, the one downside with this whole setup, this cable's kind of thick. It's a very thick cable. And so even though I have that door closed, I can usually only have that one closed partially, which is not bad when the weather's okay. I don't know what I'm gonna do when the weather's crappy, except not have cell service. <laughs> I run through my, mine through the window my front, my uh, driver's window. I can have, yeah. then I roll it up all but that, and very little comes in. And yeah. if you have uh, the covers, none will come in. Yeah, I'd have to have more cable. Right, I bought a huge amount of cable, yeah. so I could do that. Well, no, no, you could go up to your front ladder rack, then it might fit. Well, no, you'd still have to come all the way back here. Come back to the back. Yeah, no, you didn't. Now, something else about the, uh, the uh, WeBoost booster is it comes with a uh, suction cup thing. Mine kept falling off, and so I I bolted it through. <laughs> okay, and uh, you said that you will jump from uh, a few bars of 3G to uh, three or four bars of 4G. Yeah, that's, or, that's or, not unusual. Sometimes I'll go, you know, one bar of 4G to five bars of 4G. Right. Or in most cases, it does improve the signal. Drastically. You yeah. know, in some places, there's just no signal and no amount of antenna or boosting is going to do anything about it. No, Yeah. absolutely. Well, you know, when um, when we were in Prescott together that one time, I, I had my cell phone app, locate tower locator app, and we were literally 20 miles from that tower. And yeah. so we were... There's no, ex it's amazing we got anything that would, you didn't. Yeah. And even with my complete setup, I did, but it really works. These, these things really work, folks. You'll, it, it, do you remember uh, about what this cost you? It's been too long since I've done it's it. It's like I 45 forget. bucks for the antenna and then like another 20 something for the cable. And the connectors and things are like less than 10 bucks. Yeah. Probably a hundred bucks for the antenna setup. Yeah or less, probably that's high. Yeah. And uh, I think the WeBoost 
is now quite a bit more. It's like it's 170. 150. Yeah. 150. Yeah, you get it kept going up every year, even when I was. At least, one. I guess it's 150 for the um, the refurbished one that I got. Oh, that you got a refurbished one here. Yeah. No. You can always check that on Amazon if you have a couple of products. You can see if they have a brand new or refurbished, and I always get the refurbished. Mm -hmm. And that's and that's. Bob's phone making noises. It is indeed my phone making noises, folks. Because <laughs> <laughs> he gets cell service right here. <laughs> oh yeah, I sure do. <laughs> um, so there you have it. Uh, you can have internet out here. It's not a problem. It's expensive. It's much more expensive. And even though it's much more expensive than what you're getting now in your home, uh, you'll get less of it. And so that's just part of the cost of being on the road. Freedom isn't free. No. You got to pay for it to to some degree, and one of the ways you're paying is in internet bills. But um, you know, I'm not paying rent or mortgage, so how much you're saving a whole lot more than you're spending. <laughs> yes, yes, that's the bottom line here, folks. Okay, so there you have it. That's how you get internet on the road. I hope that's helped. Uh, be sure and like us on YouTube and subscribe to the channel. And if you have uh, internet, <laughs> if you have internet, and if you don't have Verizon, you may not. Uh, and so we will talk to you next time. Thanks, Al. I really appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome.